ESPN's NCAA Basketball, Georgetown versus Princeton, is brought to you by Dodge Cars and Trucks. On the street or off the road, it's the new spirit of Dodge. By Nike, who reminds you to just do it. By new wild and mild ranch-flavored Frito brand corn chips, Russell Upsum. And by the insurance and financial services companies of the Kemper Group. Ask for our products by name, Kemper. Georgetown and Princeton still coming your way as we have yet two games to come here on ESPN's first round coverage. It will be from Providence, Rhode Island in the East Region. Providence, that's where John Thompson used to play. He used to play for the Friars there, but he'll be the coach of the Hoyas tonight. Then after that, Notre Dame and Vanderbilt. Yes, it is St. Patty's Day, but Digger Phelps doesn't like it. He's just two and three on St. Patrick's Day with the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. However, Digger Phelps, who do you like in that game? Notre Dame and Vanderbilt. That's a real close matchup. That's a real tough one to call. I'm going to give the slight edge. I know it's St. Patrick's Day, but you know Notre Dame is two and three on St. Patrick's Day. I got a feeling. I got a feeling it's going to be two and four. I'm going to give the slight edge to Vanderbilt because of experience, because they got some three-point shooters that have been around and missed the clutch. Remember last year with Pittsburgh? They beat Pittsburgh. Hey, Princeton and Georgetown. I'll tell you what. I'm supposed to go home for the weekend. If Princeton could beat Georgetown, I am going to hitchhike to Providence, which isn't that far from here. I'm going to be their ball boy on their next game, and then I'm going to change into a Princeton cheerleading uniform. I'm going to lead all the cheers. Let's go Tigers! Let's go Tigers! That should I'll be enough. To motivate the team, but if they're going to win, they're going to have to do some of it from three-point range. And during the tournament, the NCAA has been conducting a phone poll on whether or not you like the three-point shot, whether or not you like it where it is, whether you want it moved back to the international level, or whether you want it at the pro level. Well, here's the result. International winning in a landslide. Everyone says 19-9 is too close, Dick. Move it back. That's the Stite special. I say I agree with the people international. Where am I going to go vote? I want to make it 46-10 because I'm voting for the international rule. The international rule. It's too close, but it has opened up the game. Oh, no doubt about it. It opens up passing lanes inside, but I just think it dominates the game a little bit too much, and I don't like it for that reason. Okay, the Georgetown Hoyas are up next against the Tigers of Princeton. This one from Providence, Rhode Island. Let us join Mike Gorman for this one. The top seed against the 16th seed, and there's still two games to come. Thanks very much, John Saunders, and welcome, everyone, to Providence, Rhode Island, the entire country now with reason to root for Princeton. So we can see Dick Vitale here in a cheerleader's uniform come Sunday. But a uh, David and Goliath matchup, if there ever was one here tonight, Mike Gorman along with Ron Perry. There is the Princeton Tiger who will hopefully engineer the miracle of miracles tonight. And Pete Carrill, one of the most respected coaches in the profession on the Princeton bench, has a great reputation of making other teams do what he wants to do as opposed to vice versa. But he is up against John Thompson and the Georgetown Hoyas. Arguably right now, forget about polls. Hard to imagine anyone playing better in the country, Ron, than this club right now. They're on a tremendous roll, and Princeton's got to handle that pressure. Let's meet the starting lineups. Here's Ray Baker. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Providence Civic Center, an NCAA first-round basketball championship game. First game this evening, the Hoyas of Georgetown University take on the Tigers of Princeton University. Here are your starting lineups. Starting at forward for Princeton, a 6'8 freshman from Baltimore, Maryland, number 55, Matt Eastwick. At forward for Georgetown, a 6'7 sophomore from Glen Arden, Maryland, number 52, John Turner. A 6'3 senior from Avon by the Sea, New Jersey, number 34, Bob Scraven. And Cohen for Georgetown. 6'4 senior from New Orleans, Louisiana, number 21, Jaron Jackson. And center for Princeton, a 6'7 sophomore from Downers Grove, Illinois, double O, Kit. Miller. At center, Georgetown, a 6'10 freshman from Chesapeake, Virginia, number 33, Alonzo Morning. At guard for Princeton, 6'3 sophomore from Woodcliffe Lake, New Jersey, 
Number five, Jerry Goyle. And God from Georgetown, Sid Duke Jr. from New Orleans, Louisiana. Number 12, Wayne Bryan. And God from Princeton, Sid Duke Freshman from Washington, D.C. Number 22, George Lepwitz. And God from Georgetown, Six Foot Senior from Washington, D.C., number 13, Charles Smith. Head coach at Princeton, Pete Terrell. The head coach at Georgetown, John Thompson. We are just about set to go. John Thompson and Pete Terrell have met at half court and will return with the opening tip-off right after these messages. Szechuan Empire New Rochelle presents authentic Cantonese and Szechuan cooking of truly spectacular quality and flavor. The menu lists 130 dishes including piquant General Chin's chicken, spicy beef with garlic sauce, and cold noodles with sesame sauce. And now there's Szechuan Empire 2, located in the Keldor Shopping Center in Porchester. Visit either of our restaurants, the original Szechuan Empire in New Rochelle, or Szechuan Empire 2 in the Keldor Shopping Center in Porchester. in Westchester County, the catch it. They got me. With the best of everything, selection, service, senior citizen discounts, and fleet prices on almost 200 Toyotas. In fact, Toyota North will beat any competitor's advertised price. They'll get me someday. This is why Toyota ranked Toyota North number one in new car sales customer satisfaction. We're going to get you. Now come on in to Toyota North. Come on in. We're going to get you. East Region action continues here from the Providence Civic Center in Providence, Rhode Island. Mike Gorman along with Ron Perry, the Georgetown Hoyas, the number one seed in the East. Charles Range, Dick Paparo, and J. Don Ferguson will be the officials for tonight's game. And we are just about set to go. Kit Mueller at 6-7 will jump it up against Alonzo Mourning. How about that? Not too many people lead the series against Georgetown, but Princeton does, 5-4. to four. Well, Princeton has a rich tradition of basketball history. They've got to get off to a good start in this one, though, and take good care of the ball. Tap is controlled by the Hoyas. Smith has got it. Inside pass bounces to John Turner. It's like a packed-in 1-2-2 two, two zone by Princeton. They'll try to match with shooters. Walks out inside. Patient here after that initial pass inside by Smith and a traveling violation on Dwayne Bryant. Good packed in, aggressive zone, pressure on the top. It's really a three guard lineup that Pete Carrill goes with. Bob Scrabus has called a forward, but he's really about 6'2. Left which now will bring it up against Smith as the Hoyas extend the pressure. Left which, freshman guard. Mueller comes high, warning won't come after him. But we'll look for Princeton to use a lot of time off the shot clock each time down the floor. I would like to use about 30 to 35 seconds if they can. Mueller again, and Morning a good five feet away. Scravis' shot is blocked by Turner and picked off by Morning. Here comes Smith. The trailer is born. He puts it on the floor. He stripped nicely. Leftwich got a hand in that. Good call. Leftwich did get his hand in it. Offensively, Pete Carrell bringing Kit Mueller out, forcing Alonzo Mourning away from the goal. Georgetown in the man defense. Eastwick now will take it top of the key. Turner a little more aggressive on him. Pete Carrell has always liked the backdoor cut. We're seeing Princeton play as flash already. Here's Mueller first time. Takes it in. Hits the hook shot. Nice job by Kit Mueller. Let the Ivy lead. 70% field goal shooting. Those kind of shots. This were the old days now. Princeton got the ball back. They may keep it for five or six minutes. That's right. right. Can't with the 45 second shot clock, though. Morning has it stripped away, but it'll still be Georgetown ball. Here's a look at Pete Carrill. 20 plus years on the Princeton bench. Kit Mueller is going to be called with the foul, jumping in his first. First on Princeton. Clearly, Kit Mueller, Bob Scrabus, Pete Carrill's top players must avoid fouls in this ballgame. 
I see a lot of smiles over on the Princeton bench, so truly they have come to enjoy this experience, no matter what it turns out to be. Smith outside, this is a three out of bounds, Princeton ball. Well, one thing Princeton should be doing against John Thompson's club is playing free and easy. I mean, not a lot is expected of them in this game, so they'll go out there and play loosely. The pressure's really on Georgetown. Eastwick again looks inside for Mueller. Just a spread offense, three guards. Doyle cuts off Mueller's high post. Now Kitt brings it outside. This is a good strategy because Morning doesn't really want to venture out much higher than the foul line. So Mueller can really stand out there unattended until the clock works itself down. 15 right now on the shot clock. There it is. Back to a cut of beauty. To goaltend, give the bucket to Stravis. That's the backdoor cut, work the shot clock down, and that's been a peak for real trademark over the years. 4 nothing, Princeton. And clearly, Princeton needed to get off to that kind of start, get a couple of hoops, build the confidence level, and just pack the zone at the other end. Doyle aggressively out on Turner there at the top of the zone. Inside, John Turner powers up two. That's where Georgetown should be looking to get it. Morning and Turner, Turner clearly with the size advantage inside. Mueller trying to get away, and a foul called on John Turner. Too aggressive on the defense. First on the Hoyas. John Thompson calling the press off the bench. Really the biggest challenge for Princeton this one is to try to deal with this. John Thompson's teams have been so successful in the NCAA tournament that this pressure has given people problems all year long. Georgetown leading the nation in field goal percentage defense, holding the opposition around 39% all year. Scravis, good little fake down in the corner. Now he penetrates, and again a goal tent. Gives Scravis some credit. He's getting it right through the bucket. Morty can't believe it, but that ball was clearly on its way down with a chance to go. Scravis. Oh, yeah, he takes that one out of the cylinder. Good call. Morning way up there, though. 6 nothing, Princeton. Excuse me, 6-2. I don't want to shortchange the Hoyas here. <laughs> Turner with the power move in. Morning down low and easy, too. Stay with their game plan, though, on this one. They'll continue to just be patient with the basketball. And it's frustrating to play D each time down the court for about 35, 40 seconds. Smith now came out on Mueller when he was top of the key. It's like a 1-3-1 one, one zone now the Hoyas have gone to out of the man set. Really a better set because it leaves you less vulnerable in the back door cuts. Scravis barks out the signals. 20 seconds now on the shot clock as Princeton has effectively held the ball for at least 30 seconds in each of their possessions. Shot clock at eight. Mueller picks it back out. Shot clock at three. Nice drive. Nice bucket. Jerry Doyle. Some kind of scoop shot with about three to go on the shot clock. Stolen down low. Left switch again with the quick hand. Done a nice job a couple of times. They're lulling Georgetown to sleep a little bit. And what happens is you play deep for so long, you want to rush it when you get it to the offensive end. Third time, the Hoyas have turned it over here in the first four and a half minutes. Yeah, that's right. If there was no shot clock, Princeton would be holding this thing for a few minutes right here. This is going to be a very quick basketball game as it is if they're going to take 30 seconds off each possession. They've played some teams this year in the 40s and 50s, averaging just over 50 a game scoring. Beat South Carolina, who played here this afternoon, losing to NC State. Mueller. Doyle. Going clears. Is Bryant the quick push the other way? Right side, Smith squares up. No. Mueller the rebound. See, again, Georgetown gets down, and now you get the ball, and immediately you want to put it up and try to score it. It's a little frustrating because Princeton will come right back at you and be patient. Three, 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 three
just a freshman now, Leftwich. A lot of pressure to handle the ball in this game. And Jerry Doyle, just a sophomore. Six sophomores and six freshmen on this Princeton team. Scrape is the only senior. Eastwood with 10 seconds on the shot clock. Here's Doyle again. Penetrates, leaves it for Mueller. And Morning sends the hook shot out of bounds. But Princeton will get the ball and a fresh 45 up by four. See, that's why Alonzo's shaking his head. He batted it out of bounds. Would have rather kept it in play. There's a timeout on the floor with the score. Yes, it is. Princeton eight, Georgetown four. What's in a name? The Kemper name means the security of solid insurance protection for your life, home, business, and auto. Even reinsurance protection. But Kemper's more than insurance. It's Kemper financial products, like mutual funds, annuities, and money market funds, working to bring you better tomorrows, insurance and investments. Ask for them by name. Kemper. Created to slip the bounds of nature and powered by an unrelenting force within. Intercool, turbocharged, Dodge Daytona Shelby. Get cash back on every new Dodge car in stock, up to 2000 during our Here's to You America Days. For the pride, for the dream, for the love, and for the team. Crisp taste of Beechwood aged Budweiser. This bud's for you. This bud's for you. The Jags are third in the nation in scoring, and North Carolina's finding out in a hurry. 21 to 13. The Tar Heels are down. Right now, back to Providence. 8-4 Princeton here in Providence, and take 35 seconds off the clock and then do this, Ron. They've been very patient with the ball, and Jerry Doyle. Number two guard gets the job done with the runner that time. Back live, Princeton controlling with that fresh 45 off the Alonzo morning block. Princeton getting seven shots up there to Georgetown's four. Georgetown's been quick with the shot, and with the good shooting by Princeton, they've gotten back on defense and haven't allowed the Hoyas to get out and run. Scrapers plants himself. And got a heel on the sideline, according to Dick McCarroll. First turnover for Princeton, right in front of John Thompson's bench. Here come the Hoyas down four. Bobby Winston is into the game. So is Mark Tillman. John, in effect, has four guards in Alonzo Morning on the floor right now. Right? <laughs> but the athletes out there, really, John recruits athletes, so all these players so versatile. I think of Bobby Winston as sort of the epitome, all-purpose kind of guy. Looks to penetrate. The runner too hard off the glass. Mueller tipped it out. Jackson got it back and put it in. That's what Georgetown's noted for the second and third efforts. They love to crash that offensive board. Here comes some full court Hoya pressure now. Leftwich gets doubled. Nearly picked off by a Tillman. Instead, it gets ahead to Mueller. Tim gets double teamed. I have a feeling everybody on Princeton's going to be double teamed as soon as they touch the ball. And a oh, timeout was up. called by Kit Mueller. I'm not sure Pete Carrell wanted it, but he got one. He ran over there and at least had the presence of mind to avoid the turnover. There's a timeout on the floor with the score. Princeton 8 and Georgetown 6. A special report. A one-on-one -on -one discussion with a Payne Weber investment executive. If you've been shying away from investing lately, there's a good reason for you to start thinking about it. Your retirement, your future. Isn't that right, Jean? Absolutely. The facts show that you'll require anywhere from 75 to 80% of your pre-retirement income to retire comfortably. 
and Social Security benefits and pension benefits are only going to pay for about half of that. So you'll have to provide for the rest. Are you ever too young to think about a retirement fund? I don't believe so. I think you're never too young and you're certainly never too old. At Payne Weber, we can help the 30-year-old with 30 years to retirement or the 62-year-old who has just one month or one week to retirement. How do I get started? What we would do is offer you a free service, which is a comprehensive and personalized evaluation of your particular financial situation, where you are today, where you'd like to be in the future at retirement, and what steps you should take to get there. For Payne Weber's free retirement planning booklet, call 800-950-5050. That's 950-5050. If you've dreamed of the perfect road, we've got the perfect way to drive it. With sure-footed front-wheel drive and 150 fuel-injected turbocharged horsepower, the 1989 Shadow ES Turbo, the new spirit of all-out performance, only from Dodge. Get cash back on every new Dodge car in stock, up to 2000 during our Here's to You America days. Princeton by 286, and the NCAA wants your opinion about the three point line. Would you like to see the three point line stay the same? If you do, 900 260 6301. Move back to the international distance of 21 feet. That's 900 260 6302. A move back to the pro distance, which is way out there, 900 260 6303. 60 cents a call. So far, the international distance is winning. Georgetown keeps turning up the defense a notch. The 1-3-1 one, one, trapping defense now after full court pressure. Leighton can't hit outside. Loose ball comes to Jackson. Bobby Winston down the lane on the nice feed from Charles Smith. First fast break opportunity for Georgetown, and they made the most of it. We're tied at eight, first tie. I don't think we'll see Princeton attack on their offensive end unless they really have an open layup. it back out to leftwich now they'll exchange outside and charles smith is matching up on bob scrabus's side number 34. And princeton ought to try to skip the ball to scrabus he's got a good shot Mueller gets stripped oh nice play to get it back and scrabus knocks it down great save seven points for bob scrabus as he hits the three and that's the princeton lead super effort by kit Mueller though on the floor Another look at Scravers from the corner. Watch the play by Mueller, though. Great job by Bobby Winston to get in there and try to strip, but there's just an all-out dive effort by Mueller. And Bobby Scravers doing what he's done all year, hitting from three-point land. Bobby Winston calls out the set. Morning is high. He's still there. Puts it on the floor, gets two. Oh, my, with authority. Just turned and wheeled. That shot is there, too, all the time. Long pass, good catch on the sideline, and Mueller gets it back from Lappin. Now Doyle and Leftwich will set it up again. Dwayne Bryant at the scorer's table waiting to get back in for Georgetown. Princeton doing a pretty good job now that they've recognized the full court pressure to go along with their pass. That was a good catch, as you mentioned, by Lappin. The hanging tough early is helping Princeton so much because they've now gotten the flow of the game going their way, which is this real patience. Two seconds on the shot clock. Scravis throws up an air ball. Here comes Winston. Good defense, Doyle, and a steal by Doyle. And he calls another timeout. Pete Perrill clearly didn't want it that time because you've got four for the game. A couple of them used up already. There's a timeout on the floor with the score. Princeton 11, Georgetown 10. Westchester County is out to get you. They got me. With the best of everything, selection, service, senior citizen discounts, and fleet prices on almost 200 Toyotas. In fact, Toyota North will beat any competitor's advertised price. They'll get me someday. This is why Toyota ranked Toyota North number one in new car sales customer satisfaction. We're going to get you. Now come on in to Toyota North. Come on in.
some things in this world just can't be explained. The Energy Wave from Converse. Cons give you the power of the wave. You may know some people who use drugs to have fun or think that they have to drink too much to have a good time at parties. Maybe that description fits some of your friends. Those friends then may put pressure on you to use drugs and alcohol for recreation. The pressure can be tough to handle, but remember, no one can force you to take drugs or force you to get drunk. Think for yourself. Keep control of your own life. This message furnished by the NCAA. Halfway through the first half, Mike Woman and Ron Perry. Princeton by one, 11 10. And this is Princeton putting some pressure on Georgetown. Georgetown with four turnovers early to Princeton's one. But Jerry Doyle here under pressure. The possession arrow favored Princeton. Calls a timeout, and that's Princeton's second timeout. Only got two left. Might as well take him while you're in the game, and Princeton's in the game right now. That's for sure, but Pete Carrill's reaction that time, I'm sure yeah. the timeout huddle, he said, look, guys, don't call any more of these things. We're going to need some in the second half. Scravis kicks it down to Doyle, who pulls it back out. Georgetown getting up a little closer defensively. The long pass over to Leftwich. Six on the shot clock. There's a cut by Mueller. Nice move. Got the bucket. Beautiful execution by Princeton. Breaking the shot clock down and getting a penetrating move. We're looking at a game that's going to be in the 40s when we're through. If this keeps up, the foul is on Doyle outside as Mark Tillman went down hard. Now Princeton's doing what they've got to do, and they're lulling Georgetown to sleep a little bit. Good backdoor cut by Kit Mueller, slices through, gets the good roll for two. Only one foul has been called on Georgetown in 11 minutes, and only two on Princeton. Well, and spread floor, some pretty good shooting, and only one shot for the most part each time, with the exception of a couple of Hoya second efforts. Morning in that high post, he just turned, went to the hoop and dunked it last time off that. One three one set now by Princeton, but same principles, pretty packed. Scravis, the Ivy League Player of the Year, coming up with the steal, and Princeton can extend their lead to five. Again, the frustration for Georgetown is they know they've got to go back and play the D again for another 35 seconds. They just got to keep Mueller up top. Alonzo Morning won't go all the way out there and chase him. Princeton will try to work this down again, Mike, and try to see if they can flash high and then get the backdoor cut. Mueller puts it on the floor. The hook shot. No. Kept alive by Lappin. Picked off by Bryant. Pretty strong new move, though, by Mueller. Wayne Bryant, coast to coast. Won't get out. He's with the rebound. Make that left foot rather the rebound. George Leftwich, his dad, a fine player for Villanova. Underneath, Mueller missed the layup that time as he had lost Morning. Lapin, though, good hustle, got the bucket. And he quick shoots that ball before Morning can react with his hands. Matt Lapin, his first two, and Georgetown takes a timeout. What a start for the Princeton Tigers. Amazing start. They're just executing, and they're right in their game plan. 15 to 10, Princeton with under eight minutes to go in the first half. And they're really putting the frustration factor on Georgetown now. Backdoor move doesn't go down, but how about three black jerseys there fighting for the offensive rebound? And then a quick shot here by Lappin before Morning can get his hands up. And even though this may be a biggie city that we are in, Guys like Matt Lapin, or Lapin rather, are winning a lot of fans real fast here in Providence. And reactions like that, Mike, on the part of the Princeton ball players, they're building a whole lot of confidence. Hey, we can play here with the Hoyas. They feel pretty good right now. A quick reminder, this telecast is presented by authority of the NCAA. Any use of the program without written consent is prohibited. The announcers for this program have been approved and contracted by NCAA Productions. The mastermind, Pete Carrill, has a five-point lead on the Georgetown.
touchdown, Hoyas, with eight minutes to go in the first half. Brian Smith, Tillman, Morning, and Winston on the floor for Georgetown. Look for Georgetown if they score to really zap on the 94 foot pressure to try to create some tempo here. Tillman is runner. Goes. Nice penetrating move by Tillman. His game has just gotten better and better as the year has gone on. Mueller finds Scrabus. They break the 10 second line. Fundamentally sound team, Princeton. They're passing the ball very well. And then there's no clock to really go at the hoop. It's just get it up here and work the clock. Well, as long as Georgetown stays in this defense, Mueller can handle the ball right where he is all night long. That's right. I mean, he's just going to take it out there. And Alonzo Mourning doesn't want to stray out too far. Or if he does, that really works for Princeton, too, because it hurts Georgetown rebounding-wise. Mueller had Lappin on a backdoor cut. I think it was just too early on the shot clock to do it. And the foul will be on Mark Tillman as Bob Scrapus made the drive. Still not even close, as you had mentioned, to any kind of bonus opportunity. Well, it's a bonus for Princeton, though, because they get another 45 seconds on the clock. That's right. That's right. No free throws, but they'll get to work some more time. Scrapus does an excellent job of seeing the floor, and he's got that overhead skip pass down. Great shooting by both sides, but... Yeah, and Princeton getting up more shots than Georgetown here. We're now 14 minutes into this game. Princeton really spreading the floor against the man defense, which really lends itself to those cutting plays. Jackson, the near steal, and a traveling violation called by Dick Paparo on Kit Mueller. I thought it was a good call. I thought as soon as he got to the ball, he had possession and walked with it. Great hustle on the part of Mueller, but as soon as he comes up with it, he's got possession right there. Yeah, and he takes a good couple of steps with it, walking with the ball. Pete Carrill really into this one. He's just done such a great job over the years at Princeton. It wouldn't get down, but Doyle picked up the second foul. That was very close to a walk on Turner. The difference there was that he was bobbling the ball, not quite able to get possession. Couldn't get it to get down, though. Doyle, the first player in any semblance of foul trouble. It's clearly a situation where Pete Carrill doesn't go that far into his bench. He's got a young team to begin with. A player like Doyle certainly can't pick up number three before intermission. These are the first foul shots of the game coming with six minutes to go in the first half. to Mueller. He's double teamed. Puts it on the floor, though. Bounce pass Lappin underneath. Oh! I mean, is that a clinic? Moving the basketball, hitting the open man, the result, the layup. Princeton is back up by five. Wow. You've ever heard the expression, patience is a virtue. If you play against Princeton in this kind of game, you've got to have the patience. Like that's that Doyle. Doyle? I think so, and that'll be his third. Yep. Jerry Doyle, the 6 3 sophomore, picks up his third foul. And this is just excellent execution. Georgetown with the pressure. Nice backdoor cut. Two bounce passes in a row. It's clinic out there moving the ball. Troy Hartenstein has checked into the game. Doyle will have to sit down with those three fouls. Kind of looks like Doyle out there. Yeah. <laughs> Good shooter from three-point land, Hartenstein. Aaron Jackson Turner ran by a Tillman, though, right in place. Couldn't put it down. Loose. Winston, two. Put a four 
dunking the ball that time. No one wanted to pick it up. Lappin and Leftwich exchange in the backcourt. Now the freshman gets it over and again. Mueller comes a long way out. No one comes to get it. Mueller's really played himself a solid first half. He's handled the ball quite a bit. Scrabe is back to Mueller. Oh, look at this. Got it. Again, Matt Lappin with that almost like lost the ball that time with a quick release. I mean, Princeton's in this game a lot longer than people thought they'd be around. Smith won't go. Mueller a big rebound in traffic. I tell you, phones are on fire all over the country right now with every Princeton alum calling up his pals. That's right. That's right. Hey, check this out. We're here to beat the Hoyas. Back to a left switch this time and a foul on Jaron Jackson. What happens, Mike, is now Georgetown playing the D, getting somewhat frustrated, really gambling and overplaying, and John Thompson wants to talk it over again. A liberal use of timeouts here in the first half. 4-12 left to go in the half, and Princeton hanging on to that five-point lead. Bob Scrabus with seven to lead all scorers. Doyle with four, Mueller with four, and Matt Lappin off the bench has four. Princeton is just spreading the floor offensively, getting the job done with some good cutting action. And Pete Carrillo is over there saying right now, let's just keep working that ball around, take good care of it. And that scoring defense a little bit deceptive because Princeton very patient with the ball themselves. They score in the fifth. While we have a break in the action here, we can take a look at the last play by the Princeton Tigers. And how about this? When the ball's bouncing the right way, it just keeps rolling your way. Lapping again with that quick release. Right place, right time. Takes the deuce. Our statistician, Ray Perry, tells me that 14 of the 19 Princeton points have come on layups. I mean, that's just great backdoor execution. We talked about it early. And I still think the key for Princeton is they came out and they got that quick 4 nothing and 6-2 advantage. Got themselves into a roll. Georgetown went weeks this year without giving up seven layups. That's right. I mean, it, it's a very unusual side to be holding their own on the boards against Georgetown. Another shocking stat. Great shooting by both sides. Princeton the advantage on the scoreboard right now. Princeton is literally starting their offense at midcourt, just spreading the Hoyas who are in a man-to-man -man defense. Gravis, bounce pass left, which kicks it back out to Scravis. Still plenty of time on the shot clock. Lappin hits three. Oh my. Lappin. Matt Lappin drills it. That was on a real line, too. It's an eight-point lead. And a foul inside. It could be the Mueller or Leftwich. I think it was Leftwich with the body, and if it was, it was on the floor. Yep, George Leftwich picks it up his first. Also, the number of times Princeton's worked the shot clock down, like around five seconds or less, and come up with the big basket. Matt Lappin's been dynamite off the bench. He's got seven. Charles Smith to inbound. Charles Smith has not scored, only taken a couple of shots, and Georgetown, because of the pace, has not taken many field goals in this first half. Jaron Jackson slashes for two. Made it look easy on that one. Left switch back to Lappin. He brings it across the 10-second line. Bryant the steal, Winston the loose ball. Stripped by Mueller, but there's Bryant trailing, and he lost it out of bounds. John Thompson's clearly got to be concerned right now by what he's seeing. Georgetown not cashing in on the break that time. Real quickness by Bryant. Too much pounding on the floor by Matt Lappin. That's just great hustle by Princeton. Two players together, knocking it out of bounds for Georgetown. Bryant right out on left, which Smith has got scrapers. And morning out a little further now on Mueller. Von Mueller puts the ball on the floor against Morning. Yeah, and Morning creeping out further and further, which again works to Princeton's advantage. Mueller looks for the cut. Scravis will try. 
Smith the rebound. I mean, Princeton's really, when the shot goes up, getting back defensively. Charles Smith back rims a three, and it's pulled down by Hockenstein. I mean, when Stravis goes to the jumper that last time, I'm watching four black jerseys running down the other way. So clearly, Pete Carrill talked about that to minimize the Georgetown fast break. Back door again. It's open. Field day for Lappin. Nine points for Matt Lappin, who averages five a game in the Ivy League. And he is lighting up the Hoyers. I mean, he's going at it. He's got the arms pumping. Morning, two. Again, morning when he can get it down in the blocks, making it look awful easy. Head and shoulders above the Princeton front line. Mueller gets it across, Lappin. Augustine had a thought, but it was a brief thought. Here's Mueller, some room, got two and a foul. I mean, he's got that move down. Listen to the crowd get into this thing. They're backing the Tigers right now, and that was up against Alonzo Mourning, the nation's shot clock leader. Nine of the 13 field goals layups. Kit Mueller is hitting three of them. He's had that strong little hook going to the goal. And clearly, Princeton's got the Hoyas taking all kinds of note here in the first half. Six points, two rebounds for Kit Mueller. Pete Carrill looks on. The lead stays at eight with a minute 25 to go in the half. How about the pace of this first half? I mean, this is really to Princeton's liking. Winston kicks it down in the corner. Tillman can't hit a three. Rebound to Leftwich. Mueller kept it alive. That's a great job. Mueller couldn't get two hands on it. Tipped it to a teammate. Princeton looking to open up a double-digit lead. Mueller again. Turns away. Rebound left with block by Morning. Here comes Smith. Smith, good pass. Tillman and a foul on Huntenstein. Stein ends up in like the second row after that one. Mueller is getting some great offensive opportunities. Just couldn't quite get that last one to roll in. And Morning waiting in the weeds for that follow-up rejection. Princeton has had eight-point leads twice in this first half. at Alonzo Mourning doing what he does best. Mueller not quite getting that one high enough, but Mourning recovering beautifully against George Leftwich with the rejection. Ah. Ah. Loose ball pulled down underneath there by Winston. Kicks it out. Smith, little penetration, leaves it for Mourning. I think they're pointing to Charles Smith. Or are they not? I'll tell you what, if that isn't an offensive foul, that's some price to pay. It's a block. Matt Lappin call for the blocking foul. He got hammered on the play, too. Must have been some movement. That got the Princeton bench up and shouting. Let's take a look. You'll be the judge. Always a tough call and fast action to see whether or not there was a slide. And Charlie Smith was up in the air, and there was a slide over by Lappin. He did get crunched. That'll put Charles Smith at the line. He has not scored in the first half. He's had a great season, the Big East Player of the Year. If we had to think about stats before the game, to think about Smith looking for his first point here. Mueller unable to control it. He thought Morning tipped it, but it did look like it went off Mueller's hand. Pete Carrill is. Absolutely incredulous of that call. Underneath, the foul's gonna go on Lappin, and Bobby Winston will be at the line this time. On Lappin is second. Pete looks pained. I'll tell you what, he got a pretty good vertical leap over there. On that, what he thought was an over-the-back job on the previous offensive rebound. Points for Winston off the bench. 
That's a pain look right there. Sure is. Winston and Morning with six apiece, leading the Hoyers. Mueller, two on one break. However, Picked Princeton up. has a chance for the final shot of the half. Dwayne Bryant pursuing that time defensively for Georgetown. Backdoor cut. Scrabus got the layup. Oh, what a pretty switch to the left by Scrabus on the backdoor cut. Down in the corner, Tillman long with the jumper. Mueller the rebound. Mueller around Bryant at half court, and Bryant the foul. <laughs> Almost gets it to drop. I think it was after the whistle, but Mueller again trying to draw the two-shot foul as soon as he heard the whistle. Matt Lappin is walking around the court with number one held up. I hope that's a defense. He is Born so pumped up. He's come off the bench. I don't know if I'd start waving number one figures in the Hoyas' faces right yet. A little bit premature for that, but he's clearly pumped. Scrabus, Hartenstein, better get it. An intentional foul is called on Charles Smith. Held on to Bob Scrabus after he gave up the ball. Wow. It's coming apart a bit here, isn't it? At the seams right now for John Thompson, it's been a frustrating first half for the Hoyas. They've had to play a lot of D. I think Scrabus wants to make the back door cut that time after he gives it up, which they've been doing, and he gets in the hole. Scrabus, an 84% free throw shooter. 28-21, Princeton. One second to go in the half. Princeton will get the ball back. Point first half to Scrabus. He's really been solid with the ball. Good all around game. Enough time to flip a shot off here. Morning should try to kick the ball back toward midcourt, and he is shading toward the basket. Here it comes over the top. Hawks got the catch, couldn't get it up in time. But they are on their feet in Providence. Pete Carrill's Princeton Club has held Georgetown Princeton are leading here at the half, 29-21. John Saunders, this is why they call it March Madness. Uh, I guess speechless would be the way to describe us here. The only thing I can say, Dick, is that the head of the Princeton cheerleading squad just oh. called, wanted to know what size tutu you wear. I can't believe this. John, I'll do the opening game next year at Princeton. I don't have to go to Providence, do I? Yeah, you gotta go. I'm telling you right now, the way that tempo is, can you believe that? They're spreading the court. I talked about earlier, the guy's a master. He's a master with the back door cut. And you know what's really happened out there? Georgetown is so flustered and flabbergasted. I can't believe it. I can't believe what I'm looking at, John. This is unbelievable. College basketball. Incredible. This is a team that rolled through the Big Incredible. East tournament by winning by margins of 30 and 25, and they blew out Syracuse. Unbelievable. And now Princeton comes in, and Pete Carrill has a outstanding game plan. Scrabus is doing a great job with their backdoor cut, spreading the court so he can't trap the basketball. And the tempo right now, I'll tell you right now, it's going to be very difficult for Georgetown to speed that game up. They're going to have to utilize some traps and get some early layups in the first four minutes of that half is going to dictate what is going to happen. This would be amazing. It's never happened before. Number 16 wow. seed trying to knock off the number one seed. Okay, elsewhere in the East region, at Providence, being played there. Everyone expected the Georgetown Hoyas to advance easily. It doesn't look like that's going to happen. It won't be easy, at least. NC State beat South Carolina, though. 81 to 80, 66, rather. That was e easy. Rodney Monroe finished with 22 points. Now, Rutgers in Iowa. The winner of this game would go on to face the Georgetown Hoyas in one of the games upcoming. Ed Horton to Roy Marble knocks it off. Iowa by nine. B.J. Armstrong for three. He was letting them go again and again. B.J. had six three-pointers in the first half. Iowa by six at halftime. But Rutgers starts to come back scrappy. Rick Dattica saves. 
gets the ball ahead to Miles Dixon. Rutgers is now down by just two. Then Gattaca once again, like Bob Posey, he banks that one home. Rutgers ties it at 62. Iowa goes on a 16-point run, though, led by B.J. Armstrong. Count it, the three-point play as he's fouled, and Iowa comes back after Rutgers had taken the lead in the second half. 87 to 73 is the final, and B.J. Armstrong finished with 35 points. So in the East at Providence, let us take a look. NC State is there with the win over South Carolina, and Iowa is there with the win over Rutgers. Yet to advance, Georgetown or Princeton? Yes, we're asking the question, Georgetown or Princeton, Vanderbilt or Notre Dame? Both those games you'll see here on ESPN. Stay with us. We are stunned here as you must be watching the game as well. The Princeton Tigers out of the Ivy League with the eight-point lead at halftime. Someday when I'm awfully low when the world is cold, I will feel a glow just thinking of you and the way you look tonight. The night belongs to Michelo. You're looking sharp. You're looking good. You've come so far. And we know how to make the most of who The Gillette Atra Plus system with the Luber Smooth Strip for the best a man can get. If you're a business spending over $120 a month in long distance services, and you think that you're saving 20 to 30 percent with another carrier, we want you to try AT&T Pro Watts. We'll waive the installation charges, waive the change charges, and if you're not satisfied and agree that we have the best value, price, and quality, the end of 90 days, we'll pay to put you back on your other long distance vendor. You can save 10 to 38% on AT&T long distance. Call us, 1-800-222-0400. Thinning hair, it's a problem most of us will face. But now Revlon has the solution. New Nutrisome supplement. Nutrisome is scientifically proven to make your hair thicker and healthier looking. After six hours of school, I had enough of the day. With the designed-in sound of a Delco Electronics music system, now the best seat in the house is in your GM car or truck. Delco Electronics, it's who we are. ESPN's NCAA Basketball, Georgetown versus Princeton, is brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? by Payne Weber, serving the financial needs of individual, corporate, and institutional clients. By Michelob, one taste will tell you why the night belongs to Michelob. And by Atra Plus, Gillette made it smoother. Here gone. The Georgetown Hoy is just about everyone's favorite, including Dick Vitale's, to win it all are down by eight at halftime to Princeton. But let us go elsewhere to the Southeast in Atlanta. North Carolina playing Southern, a game that is underway right now. Kevin Madden with a big rebound and the outlet pass on the break to Rick Fox. Carolina's ahead for the first time in the game. They were down 21 to 11. They are up by 10 right now. 44 to 34 is the score. They have gone into halftime. Now also in Atlanta, South Alabama and Alabama. First time these two teams had met each other despite the fact they're from the same state. Waits with a tough move in the foul. Bama up by five. Gave a Staba. Nails the leaner, and he's fouled. The Jags take their first lead with a minute 37 to go. And Wimp Sanderson can't believe it, but one minute left. Alvin Lee from downtown, a three-pointer. Alabama up 84-83. Jeff Hodge then with the Jags down by one. Gets the ball way out by the NBA three-point line and bangs it down. Alabama one last chance, push the ball up the floor, but they can't get the shot to fall. And South Alabama pulls off the win. The first time the two teams have met, 86 to 84 was the final. Jeff Hodge with 29, including that winner. Now also the Southeast in Atlanta, Xavier in Michigan. Michigan playing without Bill Frieder. You know the story. He's gone to Arizona State University. So Steve Fisher, the newly appointed coach, at least for now, Xavier's Musketeers rallied early. 
Tyrone Hill open inside over Loy Vaught. Xavier coach Pete Gillen likes what he sees. Xavier up by three at halftime. But the passing is nice for Michigan. Hughes to Terry Mills, wide open to Glenn Rice. Rice hit 23, tied it at 78. Just over three minutes left. Watch Michigan's hustle. Off the Rice miss. They keep pounding the boards. Finally, Demetrius Caleb comes up with the ball, and it's the long shot. And Michigan goes on to the win. It was a tight one, 92 to 87, but they do win for Steve Fisher, his debut as the head coach of the team. So in the Southeast, these games being played in Atlanta, Georgia, South Alabama with the win over Alabama. Michigan getting by Xavier. Yet to come UCLA and Iowa State. And North Carolina is up over Southern by 10 right now. And Dick Vitale, North Carolina, in that game, they fell down by 10 early, but they have really stormed back. John, that's a different situation than a yeah. Princeton game with Georgetown because Southern is running up and down the court. They're playing at a fast pace so you can get back in the game. An eight-point lead like right now by Princeton spreading the court, confidence is a heck of a lot bigger lead than somebody that plays in an up-tempo. So this is really something. Hey, stay tuned. They're buzzing all <laughs> around here. People can't believe it. They're shocked here at ESPN. And the rest of the schools will have to forgive us if we don't mention them for the rest of this halftime. The reason being, we're still in shock. The Georgia Georgetown Hoy is down by eight to Princeton. More to come in just a moment. When you're feeling something special about someone, call and tell him. Son, I look at Davy. I think I'm looking at you. Well, you were beautiful, too. I chose Ohio Wesleyan was that I knew I wanted to play intercollegiate athletics and Ohio Wesleyan as well as the other uh, schools in the old Ohio conference have a strong tradition of making opportunities available for those students who do want to participate in intercollegiate athletics. Being part of a team has the kind of mutual self-sacrifices, the commitment to a common goal and the need to communicate that prepare a, a student for a lot of different things later in life. I think one of the most important lessons I learned from playing soccer was that to win, you had to prepare. And as a team, we understood that we had to train, we had to practice, we had to set a game plan and stick to it. And that being prepared was often the difference on game day. And I think that preparing to win has a lot of application off the athletic field. This message furnished by the NCAA. Back to the miracle in Providence in just a moment, but let's continue with scores elsewhere from the Midwest region being played in Dallas, Texas. The Syracuse Orange men in their game against Bucknell. Easy win, 104-81 to 81 the final. Billy Owens with 27, that a career high. Colorado State and Florida... The Gators becoming the third SEC team to go down. They lose 68 to 46 as Joel Triplehorn had 20 there. So in the Midwest, these teams have advanced. Colorado State and Syracuse are in. Georgia Tech and Texas and Missouri and Creighton still yet to come. The West region being played in Tucson, Arizona. Southwest Missouri State and the Seton Hall Pirates. And Southwest Missouri fans wearing the bear hair. Seton Hall's Ramon Ramos had a tough day. Takes a spill off the inbounds pass. It is hurt. Meanwhile, Andrew Gaze and John Morton gets the layup, and you can see Ramos laying down. More later, he falls down hard there. No serious injury, but a long, hard day's work. But the Bears close the gap. Doug Lewis comes down in transition, hits the soft jumper off the glass. Coach Charlie Spoonauer likes the team because they're tied at 78. Pirates, too much power. Clear out Gerald Green, shakes and bakes and scores. Opens the margin, 52-48. Pressure on Seton Hall breaks it easily. Morton hits Andrew Gaze for the reverse layup. 
and 60 to 51 was the final score. Seton Hall, the Pirates get the win. John Morton had 26 points. Also in the West, in Tucson, Evansville and Oregon State. It went to overtime, but it was Ralph Miller's final game because his club would lose. 94 to 90 was the final. So in the West, the bracket looks like this. Evansville will face Seton Hall in the next round. Still to come, UTEP and LSU and Indiana and George Mason. Could it be Dale Brown and Bobby Knight? Still to come. Still to come here, we do know the second half of Princeton and Georgetown. It's an eight-point lead for the Tigers. Here's today's leader in big pickups, Ford. Ford leads in the important advantages that Chevy can't talk about. Go with the Ford leads Chevy with a longer, wider, deeper box that carries more maximum payload than Chevy. Go with the leader. This Ford costs $715 less than a comparably equipped Chevy, and that's leadership in solid value. Go with the leader. Ford trucks. Get a $500 cash bonus on selected 89 Ford F-Series trucks. Otis, contemptible. I'm speaking of offending in the personal grooming arena. When seeking maximum protection and a fresh scent, one should grab Right God Sports Stick from Gillette. Antiperspirant and deodorant. Anything less would be uncivilized. Play the 7-Up Final Match Game. All the excitement of college basketball. Every five seconds, someone's bottle cap can instantly score free 7-Up for the chance to win $10,000 if they match that final championship winning score. Hurry and take your shot. Root is air conditioning. across America, from her cities to her farms. Dependable, rude air conditioning keeps America cool. Air conditioning with a proven record for high efficiency. Nothing beats a rude. Rude, rude, rude. We're here back once again. Providence is the site, and Princeton is the team that has the lead. Now, still to come, we have yet another game, Notre Dame and Vanderbilt. It is St. Patty's Day, so the fighting Irish will hope that the Irish eyes are smiling. However, no one is smiling on us right here, at least not on Dick Vital, because you could be wearing a cheerleader's uniform. I can't get a ticket to get in here. You don't need one. They let the cheerleaders in for nothing. I've been practicing. T-I-G-E-R-S, <laughs> Tigers! Mike Gorman and Ron Perry are calling the game, and you guys have to be as amazed uh -oh. as we are right now as what is transpiring. You got that right, John Saunders. It is stunning here in Providence. It's amazing. Two things are amazing. One, Georgetown, obviously a Big East team, and John Thompson, a Providence College grad, and yet 90% of this building right now is behind Princeton. And when you look at the numbers, Ron, the numbers really back up the score. As uh, take, check that out. Rebounds just about even. Turnovers. The Hoyas turning it over more than Princeton. It's amazing. That's right. And, and shooting the ball extremely well. I think the key for Princeton is they came out and shot it well early. They continued to shoot it well, and they've gotten great contributions from Bob Scrabus, all the Ivy League player of the year and Matt Lappin off the bench. He had the fish flying and I thought Mueller was outstanding in low post. Good balance on Georgetown's team. No one really rising to the fore. Didn't have that many shots. Only 18 first half shots. And you notice one name that is missing from there. It is that fellows Charles Smith 0 for 5 0 for 1 0 points at the half for the Big East player of the year. He has been shut down by the Ivy League champion Princeton Tigers. That is an example. People have been talking for the past couple of days how everybody seemed to know Princeton would work the shot clock for 30 seconds and then back Joy to death. But it didn't matter. They're doing it. That's right. And it's been really a lull job on Georgetown because it's been spread the floor. And a lot of those layups were scored with about five seconds left on the shot clock. And that's a long time to play defense. And I was just surprised at how easily Princeton got the ball up court without turning it over. All right, Matt Lappin will start the second half for Pete Carrill's club. Jerry Doyle back in playing with three personal fouls. Jaron Jackson awaits him. This has been a key move by Pete Carrill bringing out Kip Mueller. He's Princeton center, but he's able to handle the ball well. He doesn't get a lot of pressure when he's way out from the basket, although morning creeping out as the game goes along. With Doyle coming around, and he'll take the shot clock down again. Backdoor, Doyle got two. That's that spread offense once again, and 
Pete Carrill will get cutters coming from all different angles that time. Doyle from the top. Largest lead of the night. It's a double-figure lead for Princeton. That'll be Matt Lappin over the top, I think, with the foul. On Lappin now his third, so he and Doyle play with three. Spread floor situation again. First possession for Princeton of this second half, and it's a great bounce pass by Lappin to Doyle. Off before, no one can get it. Bryant in low, morning to turn around. No, the tap, no, got it back, put it in. I mean, you talk about Morning getting it down in the blocks, and there's just no one gonna stop him down there tonight. Scrabus and Leftwich combine in the backcourt. In the middle, it ends up in Mueller's hands again. Princeton getting all those backdoor layup cuts actually have the advantage, scoring in the three-second lane in this one. Left, which will pull it out, 25 on the shot clock. Just a balanced offense. One, two, two setup. Lappin in a little trouble, gets it back. Misses the three, rebound Winston. Took it with about eight seconds on the clock, and Jerry Doyle just picked up foul number four. Now we'll see. Troy Hottenstein in his place, I'm quite sure. He's getting ready to check in. Pete Carrill not happy with Kit Mueller's shot the last time from three-point land. Heck, there was about 10 seconds on the clock. Usually don't take it till there's about three or four. Pete not very happy with Jerry Doyle's foul. Either. Not at all. And Charles Smith has just got to look to take charge more here in the second half. Look more for his offense. But he won't force it. Jaron Jackson underneath. That's two. Morning lost it on the way up. That'll be a foul on the floor, too, by Leftwich. Yeah. Heads up. Leftwich's second personal foul. Somehow Morning loses control of this. He's He's got people actually walking away. Mueller just says, okay, he's got that one. And the foul on the floor by Leftwich. Underneath Jackson, no, but a foul is called on Scrapus, I believe. Right now, what Georgetown's trying to do is they're just trying to get the ball into the trenches where they can overwhelm Princeton, and they're forcing some early fouls here. Two minutes gone here, second half. John Thompson signaling the defense, I believe. He wants his club to get in after these free throws by Jaron Jackson. Georgetown not helping themselves much here. No, and again, this is an area where Georgetown has struggled from the foul line, a 65% free throw shooting team. Fifth point for Jackson. Soft pressure by Georgetown, 1-3-1. It's not the full court, all out trapping defense. What defense, though, that Georgetown goes into, Princeton seems to get the ball to Mueller in the same spot all the time. Right in the middle of the floor. He's got good poise with it. Lappin in a little trouble, finds Leftwich. It's a 1-3-1 defense, and Princeton's attacking with a 2-1-2 in the corners. Good trap. Very good trap. Five-second call. Turns into a great trap. What Princeton's been doing effectively against John Thompson's defenses has been getting rid of the ball before the trap develops. But this time, Hottenstein just doesn't. He's buried. He can't get rid of it within the five-second limitation. And I think Georgetown, even when they're against this set defense, so they've got to push the ball more aggressively. They're even walking it up the floor now. That's going to be a foul on Kit Mueller as he was trying to keep Alonzo Morning from going where he wanted to go. Second on Mueller. A look at the action underneath. Kit Mueller giving up about four inches to Alonzo Morning. 6 7 versus 6 11. And I think it was that wrap of the yep. right arm that time, the hook move. As soon as you wrap around, you can lean all you want, it seems, but as soon as you do that wrap around, the foul is caught. That was a tie-up 
Philadelphia. And the ruling was that Charles Smith got his hand on the ball and actually tied it up. It wasn't a five-second call. Possession arrow favoring Georgetown. Yeah. Got a lot of ball, but it looked like there was some body contact, too. Sure did. No call. Georgetown down seven. Well, Mueller is really working to front warning down low. He's going to have to have weak side help to keep up with that defense. Charles Smith penetrates, throws up a prayer. Offensive foul on Smith. Cleared out with the free hand. That's the call by Froggy Paparo all over it. John Thompson exploded out of his seat on that one. Dwayne Bryant will come in. Jaron Jackson goes out. And you know going through the Georgetown players' minds, it's like each time they go on defense, they're saying, here we go for another 35 seconds. Why no the question. Patience is so important. Steal from behind. Tillman, the quick hand. Gets it up to Smith. Charles. Good push by Smith this time. Bryant squares up. Short with a three. Loose ball. Tillman's got it. The Hoyas are rattled offensively, though, right? They are. I mean, not in any kind of sync as far as Georgetown's concerned. Boarding is there. Gets two on a miss by Smith. Georgetown's best bet is to just push the ball up court, get the high percentage shot, and just crash the backwards. I'm just going to say, Alonzo's almost uncontested under there. You just want to kind of throw it up on the glass and let him get it. Yeah, either get it to him or let him crash the board. But I think Georgetown's gotten into this similar kind of rhythm that Princeton's in. That's the whole method behind Pete Perrill's game plan. John Thompson's just telling his players to play solid defense, get the boards, keep your poise. Mueller skips it. Good catch. Left which 10 on the shot clock. Lapping. Launches one. Nearly got it off the glass. Out of bounds. Georgetown ball. I mean, not a good decision that time by Not the bench by Lapping. He takes that shot. There's still nine seconds on the clock, and that's what got Pete Carrillo up. That's an eternity to Pete. This is all kinds of time for a couple more passes. Georgetown now dominating on the backboards, but not able to really cut into that lead all that much. Smith trying to leave it off as he goes through, and the foul will be on Stein outside. Second on Troy. A look at George Leftwich as Ron mentioned his dad played at Villanova and was an excellent player there. Bobby Winston takes the bump on the way through and Hockenstein just picked up another pop before the shot. The person right now is just going to play the solid defense and all of a sudden they've got themselves with 16 fouls and none for Georgetown in this second half. Make that seven. That's seven. Be exactly. The bonus. Pete saying, how can my Ivy League guys have seven fouls? These Big East guys have none. What's going on? What is happening? I thought they were the physical conference, not us. <laughs> Seventh point for Bobby Winston off the Georgetown bench. <laughs> Winston four for four at the line despite that 52% free throw average. Once again, solid off the bench, Bobby Winston. Georgetown within three. This is where Princeton came close all of a sudden at three points. It's just got to continue to run their game plan. Georgetown sitting in a zone now. They'll trap out of the 2-3. Bobby Scrabus has to get more involved for yes. Princeton. Hartenstein nails it from the corner for three. Well, he's been effective this year from three-point land, 43%. Reach in foul, call the other way on George Leftwich. He now joins the club with three. Leftwich three, Lappin three, Hartenstein three, and Doyle four. Well, clearly the reach-ins are going to be called here in this second half. Pete Carrill a bit incredulous as he looks on. 
six-point Princeton lead. Craig Escherich and Mike Riley flanking John Thompson on the Georgetown bench. Georgetown six of 11, six of 12 from the line, and Lappin is there for the rebound. Ball knocked out of bounds, the Princeton ball. There's a timeout on the court. It's still happening here in Providence. The score, Princeton 34, Georgetown 28. In a perfect world, money would grow on trees so you'd buy any car you wanted. But this is the real world, where there are no free lunches and no free rides. A world where a Ford Festiva for only $59.62 could go a long way towards balancing your budget. And the 660 powertrain warranty helps protect your peace of mind. Ford Festiva, a real car for the real world. Get 4.9% financing or up to $400 cash bonus on 89 Ford Festiva. From now on, this is what dry is. Dry is a beer that starts bold from the first taste, finishes clean with no aftertaste, and refreshes completely. Dry is a beer called Michelob Dry. One taste, and you'll drink it dry. You're looking sharp. You're looking good. You've come so far. And we know how to make the most of who you are. Where the race is run, you're the champion. Gillette. The Gillette Atra Plus system with the Luber Smooth Strip for the best a man can get. Welcome back to Providence, Rhode Island. Mike Gorman, Ron Perry, and the upset of the year. Maybe the decade is brewing here. 34-28. Princeton by six over Georgetown. 14-20 to go. Pete Carrill's club has done everything that you would have to do if you tried to map out a successful game plan. He's even got Georgetown playing with more of a soft pressure versus the full court all-out 1-2-1-1. It's a 2-2-1 three-quarter court press this time. Princeton content to just bring the ball up, get it to this man, double zero, Kit Mueller, and continue to work the clock. Georgetown drops to a 1 3 1 zone. Lappin gets it back in the hands of Leftwich. Scravis has been quiet here, second half. Somehow Princeton's got to figure out a way to swing the ball to Scravis, free him up for a couple of jump shots. Here we go down into the single digits. Leftwich with three. Scravis will fire. Rebound Tillman. That was a desperation job as the buzzer sounded for the shot clock. Darren Jackson can't kiss it home. Morning the rebound. Morning two more. Again, he's uncontested on that follow-up. Alonzo Morning, the strategy starting to settle down to be shooted up for Georgetown and let him hit the boards. Mueller the loose ball. Princeton resets. If it isn't a layup, they're going to reset. And it's becoming more and more of a struggle right now for Princeton on the offensive end against his zone. Scravis will try. Hits outside for three. Well, we said he had to get into the act, and he's the man who can fill it up from the perimeter. Princeton by seven. That was a big bucket by Scravis. Smith blocked down low, but warning the loose ball. And Alonzo is just having his way anytime he gets it down there. He really is. And Charles Smith still looking for his first points of the ballgame. Scravis trying to spin away from Jackson. Mueller knew exactly where Leftwich was when he caught that pass. Bob Scravis does a lot of directing people out there about where they ought to be on the offensive end. Here we approach the 10-second mark, and Princeton goes into their offense. He's going to have to shoot it again. Lappin in and out, warning the rebound. Shot 
clock down to four seconds that time. Skip pass across. Tillman hits a three. Big shot by Mark Tillman. 37-35. The Princeton lead down to two. A double team and a foul. Bobby Winston picks it up. It's only Georgetown second of the half, though. And the way they play defense so aggressively, that's an amazing stat here. Nearly halfway through the second half. How about this? Nearly halfway through the second half, no Georgetown player has more than one foul. That's hard to believe, and there's a lot of fouls mounting on the Princeton side of the equation as they reached in freely here in this second half, and every time they did, they picked up personals. Putting Sam Jefferson out on the floor, number 50. Bigger lineup with his zone defense to try to make it difficult for Princeton to get the jumpers on. Hoppen looks to drive, kicks it out left, which good. They ball find Scravis. Rebound taken away from Mueller. Here comes Charles Smith. He'll go all the way. Basket goes. Let's see what they call it. I think one of the officials under the basket has a charge. Yep, I think so too. I'm not so sure what the outside official had either. But the closest ref is under the goal. Charles Smith going coast to coast here. We've seen him do this so many times. He's going to try to throw up one of those runners. Good position there by Hartenstein. Official on the call. Charles Smith, disbelief. Hartenstein picking up his fourth foul. The basket counts. Smith's first of the night. Second tie of the game. It was tied at eight. We're tied again at 37. Ruling that Smith released that ball before contact. Count the goal. for two. Good ball movement by the Hoyas picking their spots here. And patiently waiting for the fast break opportunity and they've been few and far between. Ten minutes, 22 seconds left in the game and Georgetown has their first lead. A warning there on Jefferson to leave the ball alone after it goes through the hoop. Of course that allows Georgetown to set up their press which is now a 1-2-2 two, two, three-quarter court set. Doyle back in with the four fouls. Leftwich, Lappin, Mueller, and Scravis. Well, Georgetown got out of that man-to-man -man defense, which was allowing Princeton a lot of backdoor cuts, and they're keeping Morning at home for the most part. Lappin wants Leftwich to come on out. 13-10 now on the shot clock. Mueller drives, warning the block, warning the foul. Now, Mueller was so effective in the first half from the high post position now, he's going to have to be more offensive-minded to see if he can get the edge and get going to his right and use that baby hook shot. That's the 14 foul on Georgetown, the second on Alonzo Morning. Jackson back in, Sam Jefferson sits down. Georgetown has really had to keep their composure to build this two-point lead. It certainly hasn't happened in a hurry. Princeton makes it tough to mount points in a hurry the way they are so patient with the ball. Seven point of the night for Kit Mueller. Six, seven sophomore. Again, this is a very young Princeton team. was all Ivy shot 70% from the floor this year in the Ivy League and that was top in the league. Smith just threw it away and Scrave is out of the pack with a nice move. Great layup. How about that change of direction by Scravis? Charlie Smith, one of the best defenders in the country. Super move. That really got Smith's attention that move, okay? Can't remember another Princeton Tiger fast break basket. Oh. Smith for three. No. Oh. Rebound loose. Winston's got it. Throws it up. 
No, traveling, says Dick Papar. John Thompson calls time. The score, Princeton 40, Georgetown 39. If you've got yourself a car and you've got yourself a house, you could be on your way to some very nice savings. Because with Allstate Homeowners Insurance and an excellent driving record, you could save up to 15% on your auto insurance. And 15% could mean big money for all the important little things. What a day. What a day. The Allstate Auto Advantage. Another reason. A member of the Sears Financial Network. Here's the leader in compact trucks, Ford Ranger, with important advantages that Chevy and Toyota don't have. Go with the leader. You're in four-wheel drive at the touch of a button. Only Ranger 4x4 gives you this advanced system, standard. Go with the leader. And Ranger beat Chevy S10 in standard horsepower and torque. It's today's best-selling compact truck. Go with the leader. Get 4.9% financing or up to $750 cash bonus on 89 Rangers. Nothing's more exciting than moving into a new home. But when you add up all the incidental expenses, moving can put a squeeze on a family budget. So now United Van Lines and Citibank have teamed up to bring you Ready Credit, a convenient plan that allows you to finance the cost of your move and have additional funds for other needs. Ready Credit, another exclusive service from United, America's number one family mover. Ask your United agent for details. In the southeast, North Carolina has taken a big lead over Southern. They lead by 17, 69 to 52. And in the Midwest, Creighton and Missouri, it's early. The Tigers by three. Right now, back to Providence. Thanks, John. 40-39. Princeton by one in the ball. Nine minutes to go in the game. Amazing number of turnovers there. Amazing because it's so small for the Princeton Tigers. The left which has done a great job keeping his poise against pressure. The freshman did a good job that time. Georgetown turning up the press. Yet another notch out of that timeout. Lappin comes back out after he got the skip pass from Scravis. Well, Georgetown back to the man-to-man, -man, and when they've done this in the ball game, after a while, a few swings, they've forgotten to sag on the weak side, and the layup is turned up for Princeton. Scravis makes his move with nine. Leftwich gets a little closer. This is the jumper. Here comes Tillman on the break to Smith. Smith will stutter step for two. Finally on the board. What a great shifting move by Smith. Georgetown back up by one. He had actually gotten on the board on that basket where he committed the offensive. So he's now got two field goals in the game. with a 13 to 1 rebounding advantage in this half and that's really what's turned it around. A lot of them have been Alonzo morning oh, second efforts and no uncontested. Shot the game clock though continues to work itself down. It's around seven and a half to go in the ball game. Shot clock at seven. Lappin hits a three. He has come up huge in this ball game off the bench. Matt sure has. 6'7 junior out of Washington, D.C. The line right there. He made 22 threes coming in. He was shooting 44%. He really drills them. Smith just took it strong, and Smith just picked up another foul. Number four on Charles Smith. Princeton sets up down low and just takes the blow. Two guys actually set up for the offense at this time. Lapping down there and Kit Mueller, but Smith really forcing the action. He looks up. I mean, Lappin's had a lot of those reactions today. Matt's into it, that's for sure. Jefferson comes in. I think, as we said early, too, Princeton got confidence early in this game, and clearly now these kids believe. Lord, they can do it. Georgetown certainly taking these Princeton Tigers for real at this point. It's a they better be. tightly contested game now with just seven to go. Princeton the ball and a two-point lead. 
Princeton has just not veered from their game plan in this one. Good hands there by Mueller. He's been in the middle all night. Done a great job, too. Doyle tells Mueller to come out, warning now aggressively up on him. Doyle comes to the ball. 15 on the shot clock. Mueller wants to go. Warning sends it back. Off the floor, Bryant finally does pick it up. Lost it. No call. And they are backcourt to Winston. Winston lays it off. Jefferson traveling is called on Georgetown. I mean, that was some kind of sloppy wow. sequence. We saw wow. about three near travels. And finally, there was a walk. Alonzo sets it all up. All kinds of bodies hitting the deck there. Right here. It's a double dribble, isn't it? He just can't pick the ball up. He's never got possession, but he, some thought there that he might be pushing it up to gain an advantage so you get a turnover. Just couldn't pick it up. Six minutes now to go in the game. Leftwich out of the pack with it. Really into this one now. Mueller turns, got a step on Morning, and Morning got a foul. See, Alonzo really shouldn't be out pressuring him that far from the goal, certainly committing personal foul. He's still going to try to slough off of Mueller a bit. That's the third on Morning, the sixth on the team. The morning was laying off early, and now he's going out and really pressuring Mueller out from the goal. This is about 17 feet from the hoop, and Morning out there with the reach in. And, and again, Ron, it's, it's better than free throws for Princeton. They get a fresh 45 seconds, and here they go again. Well, Lapham's going to shoot one. That's the earliest shot they've taken all night. That was with about 40 to go on the shot clock, and every other possession has averaged about 25 seconds. Georgetown takes a timeout. 5.28 to go. A timeout on the court. Princeton 43, Georgetown 41. You can deal, deal, deal. You can lease, lease, lease during deal days at your Westchester Chevy Geo dealer. Get buy deals and lease deals like these. Corsica, Beretta, Celebrity, Geo Metro, S10 Pickup, S10 Blazer. So hurry to deal, deal, deal. Lease, lease, lease during deal days at your Westchester Chevy Geo dealer. Six days a week, the New York Post gives you the real scoop on the city. Incisive local news coverage the best sports pages in the country. And page six, the creme de la creme of who's who and what's what. In fact, there's only one little thing that's been missing from the post. Until now. A Sunday edition. The Sunday New York Post. We'll make your Sunday. April is National Cable Month. Celebrate with ESPN. Cheer for John McEnroe and Andre Agassi when the United States meets France in a Davis Cup duel. Feel the tension with every pick at the NFL Draft. Experience the thrills of high-speed NASCAR excitement and high-scoring college baseball. Plus, great golf, ladies pro bowling, thoroughbred racing, and Thursday night thunder. All in April on ESPN. First round in the Southeast, North Carolina with the big lead over Southern. It's 82 to 64. And in the Midwest, Creighton and Missouri. Creighton is up by two. Now let's go back to Mike Gorman in Providence. I'm beginning to start believing myself here. 43-41. And look at that. Rebounds this half. Georgetown 17-1. And they're still trailing by a deuce in this ball game because Princeton's been holding the ball for over 30 seconds of possession. And capitalizing with a lot of them. Morning again, doing what he wants down low. 16 for Alonzo, 10 the second half. We're tied at 43. But for some reason, a lot of this ball game, that entry pass has been a difficult one for Georgetown to get in there. Morning's got a lot of his production with offensive rebounds. 
Man to man now by Georgetown. Princeton will try to get the backdoor cuts. Leftwich. Mueller coming to his familiar spot, top of the key. Looking for a pass or a good cut, Leftwich. And the thing about Princeton that time, I'm watching them, and like five different guys take backdoor cuts, and finally one opens up. So they're all schooled to just keep making that fake to the ball and go to the hoop. Two-point Princeton lead, 425 to go in the game. And morning just flattened. Kit Mueller just popped him good. Really did. Pushed him right away, right in the face. Morning was fouled on the play. Clearly can't allow this. Alley oop to Morning. There's the tangle up and foul. Clearly Morning frustrated. And there's the bow right to the nose. A few words, too. Of Kit Mueller. Pete Carrill looks on. Boom. Clear out job. So the freshman Lonzo Morning to a ringing chorus of boos at the free throw line. Got the roll. 17 for Morning. Princeton by one. 4.23 to go in the game. Tied at 45. Scrabus and Leftwich combined to break the 10 second line. Mueller got two. Good look by Lapp and find Mueller going to the goal. And again, Princeton doing a great job getting back defensively. See if the Hoyas go right inside to Alonzo again. Mueller behind him. Morning kicks it out. Tillman for three. Long rebound. Tillman got it's it back. He traveled with it. Good call. As soon as he caught it, he took the extra step. 13 turnovers on Georgetown. Just six for Princeton. And that's another reason why Princeton's hanging right in this ball game. Doyle going for the board right there. The extra step by Tillman. Appears to be bleeding from the mouth, but he's gonna play. His nose is off the red. Yeah. He definitely got popped on that. Tough play. kick. Tough kick. Unless the officials missed that one, it's hard to believe that morning didn't get rung up with a person. It appears Kit Mueller caught that elbow right in the mouth, and it looks like he's either up or a lower lip that's bleeding. Right. Tapped up, no. Scravis trying to keep it alive. Oh, what a over a bunch of photographers with Jared Jackson. It's Georgetown Ball. Jackson and Scravis really hit the deck about as hard as I've seen two guys go down off the floor. Take a look. A quick shot by Lappin, but he's hit some of them, and Scravis and Jackson really go for it. And both hit the deck. Back live, the Hoyas forecourt. Smith, a turnaround. In and out, tap, no, rebound, Leftwich. Under three minutes to go in the game. Princeton by two in the ball. Up to Doyle. Blocked by Morning. Here comes Winston. That's where Pete Carrill wants to back the ball out with just under three minutes to go. Mark Tillman, the runner, goes down. We're tied at 47. <laughs> Princeton has two timeouts remaining. They call two early. Georgetown with one, and the possession arrow favors Princeton. So if Princeton gets in a jam, now's the time to use up the timeout. Man-to-man -man pressure by the Hoyas. Leftwich pulls it back out. Mueller. Stravis goes on the back door cut. Warning off him now, saying, hey, Time to just get back into the paint area. And burning up in the layups. That's right. Mueller kicks it out. Eight on the shot clock. Back to Mueller. Cut to Doyle. Got it. Great dish off by Mueller. Doyle with the big finish off. Another backdoor. Smith. 
Top of the key to Winston. Under two to go now. Inside morning and Mueller the foul before the shot. Kit Mueller, along with his nine points and bloody lip, also has eight assists on the night. What a gutty effort by the big guy. Big in a relative sense. He's about 6'7". Another beautiful feed. Doyle with a nice roll. Watch the Princeton bench. They're not into it too much right now. On their feet. Alonzo Mourning back at the free throw line. His club down two. Drilled two moments ago. Pressure free throws by the freshman. 19 for Mourning. Three of three on the night. Feeling last one with the ball wins, right? Going that way. A stunt for your bench. That's a big look of concern as this thing winds down. Princeton by one. Morning responds to the challenge. 49 apiece. Now look for a good 35 seconds here by the Tigers. Fifth time this game has been tied here in the second half. Scravis and Mueller should be handling a lot late here. Lappin comes high. Mueller, excellent at always releasing himself to the ball. Skip pass, picked off. Morning's got it. One minute, two seconds to go. Hoya ball in a tie game. Princeton will still get another possession. About a 20-second differential between the game clock and the shot clock. Uh, Georgetown's going to pull it out. Charles Smith time. And they'll try to set up morning if they can. Mueller doing everything he can down there to front Alonzo Morning. Mark Tillman catches and fires. Rebound Morning lost it. Tillman got it. Won't go down. Kept alive three times, four times. Morning. Foul from behind by Scravis. And Alonzo will return to the free throw line. I think he got him on the floor. Morning with the height advantage. He was all over that offensive rebound, tipping it several times before he could gain possession. Tillman can't get it to go. And Morning, hands all over the place. Scravis kicks that one free. Morning again with the rebound after several tips. And Scravis hacking right there. Got it on the fourth tip to himself. One on one, it was on the floor. Yeah, good call, Ron. So Morning needs to make the first. And with 23 seconds left, depending on what happens here, stage is set for Princeton to hold for the last one. And take a three. And go for the win. Depending on what Morning can do from the line. Oh, he's been tough. He's been huge at the line. Five in a row down the stretch. With not a lot of people cheering for him. Blocking that out, his concentration efforts are great down the end. Biggest free throws of his young life. <laughs> Missed it. Rebound, Scravis. Princeton the ball, down one. Here they come. They may use a timeout here. They've got two left, and they do. What a ball game. NCAA tournament fact that was just up there <laughs> may not be valid about a minute from now. 15 seconds to go. Georgetown by one. 50 to 49. Princeton the ball and a chance to win it. Georgetown can't carelessly foul. Next foul by Georgetown sends Princeton into the one-on-one -on -one bonus situation. The possession arrow favors Princeton, so if there's a tie-up, it stays their way. The key thing right now for Princeton is number one, just to get the ball in bounds. I look for Georgetown to put pressure on the basketball, getting it in. And then the key thing, I think, is to get the ball somehow in the foul line area to Mueller, work the cuts, and try to get the ball to Scravis if possible. A look at John Thompson, who's over there to set his defense now with his club. 
And the sellout crowd here at Providence, Rhode Island, has been treated to a game that will be talked about for a long time. That's for sure. I mean, the expectation level, clearly, no one, I don't think, was predicting this beforehand. And Princeton has just gone out and controlled tempo, kept this score, and put themselves in that position we talked about early where they could have a chance to win. And that's exactly what they've got right now by running their game plan and backdoor cuts in this one. And no matter what the result here on the next 15 seconds or so, the Ivy League walks out of this building tonight with their heads held very high. No question about it. Princeton, the last Ivy League team to win a game in the NCAAs. And they get a standing ovation from this crowd as they come back on the floor. Key thing for Princeton now, John Thompson will have his defense set up here, stressing no fouls, stressing boxing out and rebounding. And Princeton's got to take good care of the basketball and be aggressive with it. All right, here we go. 15 seconds. Georgetown by one, 50 to 49. Lappin, Leftwich, Doyle, Scravis, and Mueller. Georgetown man to man. They give it to Scravis. Bobby Winston on him. He gets a screen from Mueller. Comes up, fire, blocked by Morning. Loose on the floor. Jefferson can't save it out of bounds. On the floor with a second One to go. second on the clock. And Princeton's got a final prayer. Oh, Morning has come up huge at the end of this ball game from the foul line and with that defensive play it's enough time for Princeton though to get it in and get a shot off the sixth block gonna try to get it to Scravis Lappin Mueller fires no the Hoyas escape and I mean escape and advance to the second round in the Eastern Regionals Princeton Tigers putting on just a fantastic show here tonight. They were a 20-point-plus underdog coming in here, but Pete Carrill's club just played their hearts out. They believed they could do it. They came out, got the early lead, and just executed this whole ball game, controlled the pace. And Princeton's got to be proud of their efforts. Georgetown had themselves some scare. Princeton may have lost this game on the scoreboard, but that's the only place they lost it. 50 to 49, the final score. Let's go back to John Saunders. It's over here, John. John, I can't believe it. Can't believe it. Even it's with incredible. the Georgetown Hoyas winning by one, it has to be oh. one of the most incredible oh, basketball geez. games ever played in the history of the NCAA oh. tournament. A number one seed had oh. never lost to a number 16 seed, and the Princeton Tigers nearly pulled it off. I Dick Vitale. I can't believe it. You got it. the P on backwards. Let's give it that. But you don't have to oh. wear the cheerleading outfit. Oh. What a game. Hey, I couldn't go to Providence, but I would have had to go. I can't believe this. That would have been the greatest upset in the history of the NCAA tournament. I mean, you talk about being out personnel. Pete Carell has to go down as one of the great, great coaches. And what a great effort. And we were dying here. And all the people out here are dying. That's Lauren Matthews, Jim Marchione of the NCAA. Nobody can believe it. Like, did they win or lose? I think they won Do I by one. Like I'm not really sure. I, don't, oh I know you don't have to go to Providence, God. but we're going to go out there through the Can't magic of television it. right now. John Thompson is standing by one of the most miraculous games you'll ever see. John at Providence, barely escaping by the skin of his teeth. He awaits the winner of Notre Dame and Vanderbilt. Let's go back out to Providence in the Civic Center. Well, they say NCAA time. John is March Madness. And this was certainly some test by Princeton. They came out and really forced the Hoyas to play with a lot of boys to pull out the win. And your freshman came up huge at the end of the game, Alonzo. Well, I thought he did, too. I, and I think this is a game that it's an understatement to say that Princeton deserved to win this game because they did deserve to win it. They controlled the tempo. They spread us. We had to make substitutes because we got behind. The very thing happened that we did not want to happen. We got behind and played chase. And anybody in this country knows that when you chase Princeton, you're in trouble. 
That's exactly what we were talking about early. They get the lead, they build up some confidence, then they spread the floor. And each time down floor, you know they're going to run it for about 35 seconds. Well, they spread it very, they spread it very wide. They got some back doors. They got a lot of things. But you know, I, I tell you, I'm proud of our kids because of the fact that they didn't die and they kept playing hard. But I, I think we're very fortunate to win the ball game. Princeton's kids deserve to win this game. Well, you came out with the win, and that's the important thing now. And Alonzo Mourning, he really came of age. Well, I thought so too. And and we were debating because they were spreading the floor whether to take him out and I mentioned to one of the assistant coaches I think I'll leave him in because he'll make the big block and that's what he did good decision to keep him there best of luck in the next one thank you thank you very much all right John Thompson back to you John okay thanks a lot obviously Dick the phrase oh, moral man. victory is overused a lot but the Princeton Tigers certainly leave Providence with their heads very, very high. Well, Pete Carell, an amazing job of coaching. Back in 1976, when they played against Rutgers, that was the great team with Sellers and Dabney. They were undefeated, played up at Providence also, and it got down to a one-on-one, -on -one and a kid from Princeton missed it. But Princeton, for years, has done things like this against people. But he always had better talent when you had Brian Taylor. Another year, you had a guy by the name of Teddy Manakis. He had better talent than he possessed now. But what an effort. I'll tell you what, that has got to be the biggest uh, shock in that they played them that close. I guess that was just as... I, I don't know, I'm speechless, Johnny. You know me, I'm speech, I can't believe this. You know, all those kids who played for Princeton, every one of them walk out of the building and will be oh. telling their grandchildren about the time that they nearly knocked off the Mighty Hoya. Oh. And that they had Alonzo Mourning begging and pleading for the <laughs> rock. And that, gee whiz, can you imagine a foul call at the end? The kid has the rock in his hand to shoot, too. I just can't believe it. But, John, it's just uh, college basketball again, and that's why. Sparky Anderson, Tom Lasorda, all you guys, eat your heart out. The greatest event of all time is the NCAA College Basketball Tournament. Unpredictability, one-time Russian roulette. No four out of seven, baby, where the top team always is on top. College basketball, one time. It's amazing. Charles Smith it. won about 30 minutes before he oh. finally did score in the game. Our hats are off here at ESPN oh, to Princeton geez. and Pete Carell. What a job the Tigers did. But the Hoyas advanced against the winner of our next game. Stay with us. Honda presents Definitions of the Game. Acceleration. An increase in speed. One who causes action to happen sooner. Acceleration, as defined by Calvin Murphy. The shape is distinctively advanced. The cockpit designed for comfortable travel over time and distance. The Honda Prelude SI slightly ahead of its time machine. So the Georgetown Hoyas win and advance at the East Region in Providence. Now elsewhere, other action there today, South Carolina and NC State. NC State coming off that disappointing loss. Boy, they were blasted by Maryland in the ACC tournament. South Carolina, while well, they were just trying to advance after really a disappointing second half of the year. Chris Corciani drives inside for the layup. Wolfpack by 16. Then back comes South Carolina. John Hudson fires up the easy layup. Jim Valvano says, hey. Where's the defense, guys? But then it was Razzle, Dazzle, and Showtime. Corciani to Kelsey Weems, who reverses underneath, throws it up, and gets the hoop to fall. And then the last inside. Corciani again to Weems, who jams this one down, and South Carolina loses by 15. 81 to 66 was the final there. Rodney Monroe had 22 points. So Rutgers in Iowa. Rutgers, a team that came into this one out of the Atlantic 10. Iowa out of the Big Ten, trying to keep their unblemished record going. Ed Horton. Finds Roy Marble, Iowa by nine. Then the other senior takes over, B.J. Armstrong. Hits for three. 
and he was bombing again and again. He had six three-pointers in the first half. Iowa by six at halftime. In the second half, Rutgers defense scraps for the points. Rick Danica knocks it ahead to Miles Dixon. Rutgers down by only two. Then Danica again, watch him hang in the air, throw it up and off the glass. Rutgers ties the game, but then Iowa goes on a 16-point run. B.J. Armstrong count it and the three-point play is fouled. Iowa wins it 87 to 73 was the final so they advance in Providence and the game you just saw in case you just joined us this is not a misprint this is not a mistake I am not insane 50 to 49 is the final score the Georgetown Hoyas win it Alonzo Mourning shot from the free throw line he hit one of two with seconds remaining of the game the difference is Princeton couldn't get off a good shot in the final seconds Oklahoma against East Tennessee State, they won by one. They were a number one seed. Illinois, they took on McNeese State and had to win it in the second half with a late charge. And Georgetown against Princeton barely gets it done, so the number one seeds did struggle. Georgetown will face the winner of Vanderbilt, Notre Dame, and NC State will go up against Iowa. And Dick Vitale, I have to ask you, will it be in the good interest of Notre Dame or Vanderbilt, having watched this game, to say, hey, Maybe if we style it, stall it against Georgetown, we can do it as well. I think everybody basically has that in mind, to spread the court, to utilize the clock. But it's easier said than done. Princeton just does it to perfection and really today jumped out early and had everything going their way. I think psychologically the big point now is John Thompson could look at his players in the locker room. says, fellas, just because all the so-called quote-unquote experts who really don't know what they're talking about, you know, those guys, what's their name, Paco McGuire? Oh, yeah, Vital. Vital. <laughs> but, you know, basically he could look at them now and say, hey, let me tell you something. We had the scare of our life. We're lucky to get away with it. Now, unless you guys really come to play and really give us the kind of supreme effort every night, don't think just because you got the term George Dad on your, sh your shirt that you're going to win. I think this is a great learning experience, especially from a winning environment. And you know what else, John? I wouldn't want to be the next team to play Georgetown. I think you're looking at the blowout, the 10, 15, 20-point kind of win because of this experience. Unbelievable that Princeton has to go home with the L. But I bet you won't be making any promises about wearing a cheerleader uniform for that team Ooh. because you had to sweat it out. Those who say that the automatic bid teams don't belong, guess what? They do. Princeton almost knocked off Georgetown and next, Notre Dame Vanderbilt. Play the 7-Up Final Match Game. All the excitement of college basketball. Every five seconds, someone's bottle cap can instantly score free 7-Up or the chance to win $10,000. If they match that final championship winning score, hurry and take your shot. The shape is distinctively advanced. The cockpit designed for comfortable travel over time and distance. The Honda Prelude SI, a slightly ahead of its time machine. You're looking sharp, you're looking good, you've come so far, and we know how to make the most of who The Gillette Atra Plus system with the Luber Smooth Strip for the best a man can get. To keep your business performing. Hello? We've lost some music. Conica fax machines deliver on the spot. When overnight just won't do. Conica facsimile saves the day. CAA Basketball, Georgetown versus Princeton, is brought to you by Honda, who invites you to test drive the Civic four-door at your local Honda dealership today. By 7-Up, the choice for refreshment. Cool me down, 7-Up. By the good time, great taste of McDonald's. And by Allstate, for home, auto, and life insurance, you're in good hands with Allstate. If I say it too many times, it's because I don't believe it myself. The Georgetown Hall is 50 and the Princeton...